Hey, good morning. Welcome, St. Jack's. Bienvenue à St. Jack's. We are so happy that you've joined in worship and teaching with us today. And, you know, we just want to thank you for being online with us with YouTube and Facebook. And if you're in the Zoom room this morning, we are very grateful that we actually can still worship, even though we can't shake hands and hug. Now, um, you know, I just want to say that this morning, let's be open because you know what? God might want to speak to us you know, into our heart, into our ears, something that could improve our life or build our faith or actually bring real encouragement to us today. So, you know, I just am looking forward to hearing actually my husband speak. As well, we just want to let you know that we have a few really great things online coming. We have the Book of Jonah. We're going to do a Bible study. We have also uh, our date nights marriage course starting up in mid-February, something for everyone. And as well, the youth are going to start doing a Life on Purpose course on Sundays in a breakout room. So it's really going to be great. Anyway, um, let's pray as we dive into God's word and as we worship. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just say that we are open. We're open, Lord, for you to speak to us, to fill us, and Lord, to fill us with faith and encouragement today in, Lord, a tough season that we're in. But Lord, we just come to you today with all of our hearts to just worship you, pray to you, and spend time in your presence. Amen.
Will you meet me here again? 
Hey everyone, I'm Curtis. And you know, it's just so good to sing together even online. I have to say I miss uh, being together live and uh, having the band lead us in worship. But um, it was nice to have Kira Pierman, who used to be part of St. Jack's. She was one of the founding members, members and she was uh, leading on that last song. So uh, we've got some great things coming up online at St. Jack's, some studies. You want to tell us a little bit about them, Marnie? Yeah, I said it before, but you know, we are doing our date nights. So if you'd like to check that out, we'll give you information coming up for that. But as well, Olivia, our kids and youth intern, she is starting up on Sunday, February 6th, four-week series called Life on Purpose. And we will just have the youth go into breakout rooms. So it's mm -hmm. going to be really, really, I think, a faith-building series for our awesome youth. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be leading one starting February 2nd, Sympathy for Jonah, where we'll be reading this fantastic book by David Benjamin Blower and yeah. also uh, studying the book of Jonah in the Bible. And so a lot of people have already signed up, so I encourage yeah, you to do exciting. that. So um, now I'm going to be teaching a message entitled Summoned by Name. So let's listen to the scripture and some teaching. Hi, everybody. I'd like to begin today by reading from the Gospel of Matthew. And Jesus said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us our food for today and forgive us our sins just as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive you your sins. That's from Matthew chapter 6. And, and Jesus is encouraging us to address God as our Father, as someone who is close to us, who is known by us, and who also knows us. And so... I want us to keep that thought in mind as I read this next scripture to you, and, and then I'll explain to you what I want to talk about for the remaining about 15 minutes. This is from Isaiah 43, verse 1, and it's one of the scriptures that I've read uh, as 2022 begins, and it's kind of become sort of like a theme scripture or a, an important scripture for direction and light in my life for this year. And here's what our Father, to whom we pray, as Jesus taught us, but here's what our Father is saying to us. Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. That's Isaiah 43, verse 1. And that's really rich. There's four things that just jump out at me. Redeemed, summoned by name, and you are mine. That's quite awesome. And you know, as I'm beginning this year, I'm reading in the book of Genesis as well. And, and so I love Genesis. It's just some of the best stories in the entire Bible are right there. So you hear, have Abraham. God speaks to him and he embarks on a journey. Then we have uh, a little later on Jacob who is scheming and then he's dreaming and then later he's freaking out, wrestling with God, scared of what's coming down the pipes. And uh, we move on to his son Joseph who as a young 12, 13 year old is dreaming some really incredible dreams. And, you know, Howard Thurman says in his amazing book, Jesus and the Disinherited, uh, you'll see a picture of that book here. He says, again and again, 
A man full of years is merely the corroboration of the dreams of his youth. And that's a profound statement. And the older I get, the longer I live, the more I realize that's true. Because even what I'm living right now is kind of, it's so attached to the dreams I had as a young boy, as a teenager, um, as, as a young man. And so, uh, so let's talk about this idea, summoned by name. Now, we could refer to that as the call of God. God is calling us. And I think he's continually calling us uh, throughout our whole life. But when I think back of my first understanding of the call of God or being summoned by name, um, that was not a pleasant idea. Uh, for, for me, it was... Uh, to be called by God mean, meant basically resigning myself to a less than life. Because the people who I saw in my life at that time who accepted the call of God were people that my friends and the community that I was a part of, they were mocked. They were made fun of. And... So when the call of God was presented to me as an idea, I thought, uh, no, thank you. I uh, don't really want that kind of a life. I don't want to be the brunt of jokes at parties. I don't want to, uh, to basically uh, abandon uh, the life I imagine as being best for myself to settle for something that uh, that God wants to uh, like command me into. And, you know, so the call of God was not something that was desirable. But then moving on a few le years into my early 20s, as I was finishing up university, I just kind of met Jesus. And I couldn't resist him. I fell in love with Jesus. And uh, so the idea of the call of God being daunting and less than exciting or the acceptance of a hard life, that kind of faded away. And I, I just, that resistance was broken down because I really, now, this new reality, I had fallen in love with Jesus. And then that, so going from one extreme into another where suddenly um, the messages I was hearing was that the call of God was now the possibility for a heroic life, to do great things, to change the world. And it was like, okay, I could gain some renown for myself or I could... Uh, achieve a uh, hero status. Uh, it's like uh, on our desk, we had this desk de uh, plaque that said, make no small plans here. I was just imitating some of the heroes that I had. And so off we went pursuing greatness. And, you know, that's kind of uh, an opposite extreme of what I think the call of God or being summoned by name really is. And so... That began to change when uh, I, I pursued that for, for years, well into my 40s, and then things kind of fell apart. And I realized, and I, I can see it even very clearly right now, uh, that for much of my life chasing this great adventure, the call of God was... Really, I was drinking very shallow drafts of the presence of Jesus, of this relationship of love and closeness with this beautiful Savior. And it was uh, 
it was kind of few and far between for me, but mercifully, the projects that I was a part of, the church that we had planted, it uh, just closed down. And there's a whole story there that I'm not going to go into. But all that to say that this um, difficult time was a reintroduction into a beautiful mercy and a beautiful consolation and suddenly a wonderful reconnection with this close relationship with Jesus. And I came back to this sense of being summoned by name. And I want to talk about that for a few moments. See, we have been called. And one of the first things a parent does with a newborn child is to give them a name, to call them, to name them. And uh, so I want to ask you a question here. And it's a pertinent question for me because uh, um, I'll tell you a, sh a little story. But the question is, do you like your name? Now, my name is Curtis. And when I was a kid, I didn't like my name. And Curtis is a pretty cool name. I really like it now. But as a kid, nobody else was named Curtis. I didn't know anybody. And, and I remember being in the general store in this very small village of grassland where I went to school for 13 years, kindergarten to grade 12, and being in the general store as a five or six year old, and I would wander off as my mom was doing some shopping, and all of a sudden I'd hear my, my mom's voice, and she'd be calling me, Curtis, and I hated that. I just had this visceral reaction as a kid. Don't say my name out loud. I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of, that, that was just how I felt. And of course, I was in the toy section or in the uh, candy section. And, but, and my mom is calling my name. And I just felt so, uh, just, ooh, my skin just crawled. And I think sometimes we treat the call of God or we have this idea of God calling us and, and we have this kind of reaction like, oh no, oh no, please no, don't call my name out loud. And, and, uh, but um, that's, that's not how it is with God when he calls us. You know, when we read the words, I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. That word that's used and, or translated summoned is, it means to urgently call someone to be present. It's, uh, it's an invitation. It's, it's with authority and it's with a certain sense of urgency, but God is calling us to be present. Like, in other words, come be present with me. He wants us near him. And that is really awesome. And I think I want to say that primarily is what God summoning you by name is all about. God simply likes having us near. And when I think of that, that makes me think of the words of Jesus where he says in John chapter 14, I'm going to prepare a place for you that you may be with me where I am. And often when we read that scripture, we think, oh, well, he's talking about one day we're going to heaven or after we die, we'll be with him. And I want to say, don't think about that. Let's stay just on that simple point where Jesus said that you may be with me. That's his motivation for what he's doing right now. It's so that we would be with him. That's beautiful. In another New Testament passage, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, uh, the writer Mark is telling us about Jesus calling or summoning by name his 12 disciples. And he adds this phrase, he summons the 12 to be with him. And so God is calling you 
and me to be with him. And that's a beautiful thing. And of course, we are summoned or called for a specific task or purpose, which uh, that is absolutely perfectly aligned with who we are. And so aside from God's call, uh, God's desire for us to be with him, he's calling us because it's who we are. And it's also who we will become as we accept that invitation or accept that summons and come and be with him. See, God knows us. He's acquainted with all our ways. He knows who I am right now. He knows who I am becoming. And that's comforting because I also know uh, uh, and often I focus on a lot of my shortcomings and not so much on who I am becoming. And so God knows. He knows when I rise, when I fall. He knows when I get it right. He knows when I get it wrong and when I get it wrong again. He knows all that and yet he still wants us near. And you know, so God wants us near because he loves us. And as we read the Gospels, as we read the stories about Jesus, as we spend time with him, you know what? It's impossible not to fall in love with him. I'm thinking of a story I read this week about Andrew Garfield. He's the new Spider-Man. He also uh, played a role of a Jesuit priest in a movie entitled Silence a couple years back. And for that role, he went on a, an Ignatian retreat and he practiced the, uh, the Ignatian practices, the examine, these prayers that uh, uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola taught his, his priests. And so for several weeks while he was on this retreat, Andrew Garfield uh, prayed these prayers and which these prayers are all um, ref referring to different stories in the life of Jesus. And here's what Andrew Garfield told the, uh, the U.S. Uh, magazine, the National Catholic Review. He said, there were so many things in these exercises that changed me and transformed me that showed me who I was and where I believe God wants me to be. And then the interviewer at the National Catholic Review asked him what the most interesting aspect of these exercises was. And Garfield replied, what was really easy was falling in love with this person, falling in love with Jesus Christ. That was the most surprising thing. And I think that's pretty cool. He fell in love with Jesus. And so, you know, when we encounter Jesus in the Gospels and we um, even take time to be with him, to heed this summons, to just be with him, it makes us vulnerable to falling in love with Jesus. And that really is why the Father in Isaiah 43, or Jesus saying, I'm going to prepare a place that you may be with me. That's why Jesus called his uh, original disciples and calls to you and me that we might be with him so that we would fall in love with him. And that more than anything is what it means to be summoned by name. And I want to encourage you to Think of this call of God in this manner, rather than being summoned to some great task or project that will make you a hero or a colossal failure if it doesn't work. That's a distortion. And that's to take it beyond the heart of what it really means to be summoned by name. God the Father the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died on the cross, who rose again, 
He wants us near him. He wants to pass time with you and me. He wants your presence, your conversation. He wants to be with you, with your thoughts, like having tea or coffee with him or just sharing a song, listening to music together or looking at a sunset. He wants you just near. So I'm going to read that scripture again and then close. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And that is just so beautiful. And you know, that a quick application before we break into our study groups is, uh, you know what, this is the way I pray for my family, my friends, my neighbors. I believe God is summoning them by name. God's personally reaching out to them and I might be a part of that. And it gives me confidence. And so I pray that they like Andrew Garfield, they like myself fall in love with Jesus. That's really what it's all about. And so, We're going to break into groups now, and we're going to talk about this. So I pray that you hear these words. Do not fear. I am the Lord your God. I have redeemed you. I am summoning you by name. You are mine. God bless you guys. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Hope that was encouraging for you. I think I often, I know myself, I need to be reminded of how much God cares for me and how much God just wants uh, each of us just to be with him. So that's all for today. We pray you have a great uh, remainder to your Sunday and just a great week coming up. Once again, uh, sign up for some of these online uh, courses or events that are going to be happening at St. Jack's. And uh, we pray you just have a great week. God bless you, everybody. Bye.